So we're going to try a couple things that Amadeus recommends, and it's switching from 2P to 5P to 2P to 5P very, very quickly without getting two of the same, right? And basically what you're doing is you're getting used to the rhythm of switching between standing and crouching attacks, right? So what we're going to try and do here is like this, just like that, right? You want to get used to returning to neutral, right? So you're going to tap down and P, and then you're gonna let go and then you're gonna tap again. You should be able to get two of each, right? Up, down, up, down, right? Or down, up, down, up. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna get two of the same. That means you're going too quickly. So we're just gonna push Slayer back and forth. Oh, yeah, nice and fast. He's in the corner, you can go ahead and talk, toss him out. Oh, you're, he, te he teched backwards. Oops, there we go. Go ahead and dash over him. Jam is, is special when it comes to Guilty Gear characters because her Gatlings are really flexible. She can go forward and backward buttons a lot more easily than a lot of characters can. And so, and because of that, that means that when you're next to someone, when you're in, in, within striking range, even if they're blocking, you have access to a lot of her moves. And so you get to be pretty, pretty flexible and pretty versatile with how you use her attack. You can do a lot of different stagger pressure chains. And it, it just, the sheer volume of visual stuff that people have to think about when they're, when they're blocking jam uh, is, one of her strengths, right? It makes her, her strings just a little bit harder to read, a little bit more confusing, and that's how you get people to panic. Right? Ooh, we're not quite done yet. And so getting used to how the attacks, how the, how our different Gatling changes work, really helps uh, improve your kind of, your, your comfort with the, the character's moveset. All right, so now, now we're gonna switch strings. That was 2P, 5P. Now we're gonna do 5P, 5K, right? Oh, that's funny. Uh, so because of the way this string works, the five Ps might actually whiff. That's okay, we can keep doing it. Five P, five K, just keep on doing it. Yeah, because he crouch blocks the kick, which is which is interesting. Oop. Because that you can use that to set up tick throws, but we'll do that later. So the one neat thing about the drill here is if you're getting 6K, right? This is, this is a good habit to get into with jam in general. If you're getting it with 6K uh, while running up, it means you're letting go of, of six too early. You need to make sure you get that, those fives in, right? Get to the corner, go ahead and just toss them out. That's right. Look at how fast that 5P is. Even when it whiffs, it's so fast. Jam, jams, ooh, jams attacks are really fast. Oh, we can do Zotto. We'll, we'll do Jam for a while and then we'll do Zotto. Yeah. So Jam stand, stand Punch is five frames, which means it's one of the fastest attacks in the game. Yeah, I love playing Zotto. Zotto's a lot of fun. Take them back and forth, coast to coast, baby. That's what's up. Get used to these gap lines. All right. So now we're gonna use, we're gonna keep them blocking. We're gonna practice some tick throws, right? So the easy one, the one to start with is just run up 5K and then throw, right? Now when you do run up 5K throw, you probably wanna option select the throw with slash. You're gonna do run up 5K, and then after the 5K, you need to wait for a little while, right? So throws in Guilty Gear are one frame. But uh, the thing about throws in Guilty Gear is that even though they're one frame, after someone leaves block stun, I believe they're, they're throw invulnerable for, I wanna say five frames, something like that. It's different numbers for hit stun and block stun, knockdown, that kind of stuff. So you have to wait a little bit after the 5K and after they recover, right? So you're gonna do 5K, wait, throw. We'll worry about the combo later. 5K, wait. Through. You can go ahead and set recovery to uh, disable. Go ahead and set recovery to disable just to make this easier. Hey, what up, one bin? Good to see you. 
just get used to that timing. If you get, so you're gonna you want to option select this with close slash. You're gonna press six S H, right? But if you get the close slash, it means you were too early. After Slayer drops down, you go ahead and backdash and run up. 5K, bro. Let Jam coast a little bit, right? And 5K also is surprisingly good range. Look at that, right? This is like the very tip, but just step forward, yeah. So you can hit it. You can hit it pretty early in the run up, and then keep keep coasting from the run and throw. You don't have to rush yourself, baby. You got all day. Also, this button is like plus three or something. It's real good. Just get used to tick throw time. This becomes really scary. Plus two, thank you. This is this is part of what makes jam so scary, right? Because if at any moment she'd be in your face with a fast button that she can tick into a throw and then she gets a combo after that, well, that's gonna make you wanna mash, right? That's gonna make you wanna mash, it's gonna make you wanna jump. And that's where jam really gets to start doing damage. Do another lap of these tick throws. Oh, Irene asks, why is it called a tick throw? That's a good ass question. Oh, CT Warriors playing tech. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I know the term comes all the way from Street Fighter. It might have been because back in Street Fighter, like it could be ref referring to tick as a unit of processor time. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't tell you. They also used to just call it like stutter step throw and that kind of stuff. Yeah. One bin says it's because they're annoying to deal with them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next tick throw we're gonna set up, so that was just 5K, and if you run up from 5K, it doesn't push you back that far, and you're still coasting from the uh, from the run momentum, so it's easy to, to get the throw afterwards. But if you're super predictable about this, if you're only going off one 5K, then it's gonna be really easy for them to understand when they should be mashing or, drunk, or jumping away or back dashing or whatever, right? So you gotta, you gotta be more versatile than that. You gotta set, learn to get the setup for the throw off multiple buttons, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is just 5K, 2K throw, right? Now we're too far away after that. So you got, uh, uh, so then you gotta run back up, right? Now if we run and then do it too fast, oops. If you run and then go in for the throw too fast, you'll still get the CS, right? Ooh. There you go. Yeah. We're just learning how to play jam. Oops. Why am I getting an ID? That was rough. <laughs> and so the neat thing about 2K here is that if they're trying to backdash uh, after the 5K because they think you're going to run up and throw after 5K, if they're trying to backdash, then what's going to happen is they're actually going to be st in standing block stun and they're going to get hit by the 2K. So you can catch them trying to get a backdash without actually having to stop your block string. This is a cancel, by the way. If you really want to call it out, you can just keep on doing 2Ks. Yeah. Just Back and forth, getting used to this. This kind of stuff, oops, this kind of stuff is useful for every character. Oops. It's kind of, it's, it's useful for every character, but if you mess it up, you, you are giving up a big opportunity. So we want to make sure we get it. You can mess up now, it's training mode, it's fine. No one cares if you mess up in training mode. I mess up training mode all the time. All right, one more lap on this one, we'll move up to the next one. Oops. Ooh, too much. Shout out to CT Warrior playing Tekken right now. He beat me in a close one at Wednesday Night Fights last night. It was a lot of fun. I always have fun playing CT.
Oh yeah? What, what are you having trouble with? Oh, so just to start with, I see it uh, FDing sometimes. You want to turn that off? Oh, yeah. You, so you have you have block type set to random, which means that sometimes you can no. I want uh, block type set to normal. You want block switching enabled, block settings everything. If block type is random, then sometimes they get FDs and IBs, and that's what changes the timing. Oh, sorry. I think that, I think that was recovery, and then I disabled that later. Yeah. All right, so you can keep on with these drills, right? You can go 5K, 2K, 5K run up throw. We'll do 5K, 2K, or 5K, 2K, 2P run up throw. Nope. Hey, Raid XR, thank you so much for the follow, homie. Welcome to the crew. Oh, interesting. So if I go, if I go 2K. Oh, wow. 2K doesn't actually Gatling into 2P. So for this one, we'll do we'll do another fun one. We'll do just 5K and then whiff 5P into throw. Look at that. The timing for that is actually is really weird. What's up? Yeah. Oops. The reason that whiffs is because they have to crouch block the 5K, and so they're probably not going to stand back up for 5P, right? But they're going to see you attacking, so they won't necessarily be thinking, oh, I can press a button now. And if they try to press a button, your 5P might stuff them. All right. <sighs> So next, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and do a quick throw combo. Um, I know there's a bunch of different throw combos. Yeah, Grimmond, it does feel really good. I know there's a lot of different throw combos for for Slayer. I think the one that I see the most often looks like that kind of. It's throw, wait a bit, slash, jump cancel, slash into DP, and then get you. Right. So we'll go ahead and do this one for now. I actually often use a super jump instead and just do slash hard slash. I, I skip the double jump. Um, so you know what? You can do whichever one you want. I know the double jump one tends to be recommended more highly, but I'm not sure why. So, right, so we can we can practice both. Um, this is absolutely something that's a little bit more challenging to get when you're net playing. The main thing to keep in mind is if you jump when jam is first available to jump, uh, you're not going to be able to get the combo you want. You can still get a... What up, mama? <laughs> you can still get a combo. But uh, if you do if you do the ja the jump immediately, then they're going to be a little bit higher than usual. So you want to wait a little bit. You want to let Slayer come down. That'll make it so that you don't push him too high, right? This is also why I like the super jump version because it's just the timing is a little bit trickier, or the t the timing is is a little bit different, right? Um, but I find it a little bit easier to just <laughs> not miss. But we'll do them both. The, the, the way I've timed it in the past, let's see if this works. Let's see it. Throw. One, 1,000. Yeah. I don't think you do one bin. Because the, the, the character weight affects gravity. Throw him in the corner. And yeah, Ama, that's a good point. It's it's harder for lightweights because they move more. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, missed the Geki. I, so I don't, I think weight mostly affects falling. It may also affect launch heights. Um, in general, what I find is that I, for, for neither Jam or Johnny, both the characters with like launching throws, you never have to jump at the, the, the earliest possible time, right? Which is interesting, like from a design perspective, what that does is it, uh, if you have to time the jump, then uh, it makes it harder, right? because you're doing a link. Oops. 
right? If I can just hold up and reliably get the combo, then there's no timing there. What up, UZK? Yeah, come play with us. We're just doing jam stuff. Shouts to Ama for writing up a set of drills. Now you'll notice, because because tech is set to off, a uh, recovery set to off, layer won't do anything. But we're still getting the combo right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna take the throw combo, which hopefully you've got it okay. If not, you can keep working on it because we're gonna keep working on it together. But we're gonna take the throw combo and we're gonna get tick throws into it, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do our our 5K and then the throw, and then the 5K 2K and the dash throw, and then the 5K 5P and the throw, and so on, right? We'll keep on doing this stuff. Oops. That's what's up, Ama. Get, when he gets in the corner, just go ahead and chuck him out. Keep on doing it. Oh, absolutely, Ama. So Irene won't actually let me play jam against her because she says that losing to jam makes her salty. And, w and when, I, when I tell her that uh, she, every mirror is exactly what she deserves, uh, she doesn't, she doesn't talk to me after that. <laughs> hey, what up, Star Speed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. What <laughs> one bin knows about my apology tech. <laughs> Just working on our tick throws, baby. All right. You can tell Pat isn't really a jam player because he OSs his throws. That's true. I'm trying to. I'm trying to demonstrate. I'm trying to put on a good example for the kids. <laughs> It does, it does work against Zeno. You want to throw us against Zeno. Oh, a little late. All right. So now we're just going to card up. So go ahead and press down, down, S to get Gekidin. That's her overhead. It's a very good thing to card, right? So the, way, the way this works is you do down, down, S. You charge for a little bit. She does a little duck. And when she's done with the duck, her, her next uh, uh, Gekirin, that's uh, 2, 1, 4, and kick is powered up. Right? When it's powered up, she gets a little more damage, it's a little bit faster, um, but it also gives you a hard knockdown, right? And we can use that in our throw combo. So we're gonna do the tick. You do the throw combo. Boom, you get the hard knockdown, you charge. You're just gonna do it again. It's the same thing, but a little more pizzazz this way. If we wanted to, if we wanted to, we could cash that, that hard knockdown in for more damage instead. We're not gonna do that right now. Oop. I missed it. Sometimes that happens. Throw you out of the corner. Oh, a little bit too much. I need to cancel the DP a little earlier, it looks like. What up, X Cool? Good to see you. Oh, too early again. Yeah, so you need to let him drop a little bit more if you want to get that Geki consistently. Oh, too early. Oh, too early again. This is good. I dropped this stuff. A, a, a lot, so being able to work on it is good. And yeah, 
the, the throw not the throw launch lasts for a long time. You can throw and then after the kick, just say one one thousand, and you can still have time to jump. You'll be good. One one thousand. Oh, too quick. One one thousand. Oh, too late. All right, we'll do another throw combo. Yeah, oh, that, that's gonna be a good one. That's what's up. Part of, part of the utility of training mode isn't just in getting better execution. It's also actually in learning early when the, you're doing a thing that's about to fuck up, right? Because if you know you're about to fuck it up, you can either change course, or you can be ready for the situation that happens after you fuck it up. So now, that's that's good for throws for a little bit. Throws are an important part of get Jam's game, so we're gonna we're gonna keep working on that. Of course, it's very very uh, important, right? But now we're gonna work on just a simple B and B. So we can go ahead and we'll set Slayer to stop blocking, or whoever you're playing against, you can stop blocking. And we're gonna come back to 5K. This button is real good. Look at that range. Look at this range. It hits low. It's actually got an especially low level of hit stop. So it hit stop is when the game briefly freezes, right? Let's see if I can get, get a good example. Uh, does it let me turn off? Hide menu, there we go. So right now, I pause this while we're in the middle of this this uh, this moment where the, the game freezes for like 10 frames, so about maybe 10 frames. I actually don't know how long the hit stop is on this particular attack. Um, but hit stop is time where the game freezes just for a little bit to let you see the pose of both attacks, or the, of the attacker and the defender, right? It's what helps give these attacks feel like they have some weight, right? And hit stop is different per attack, but... Uh, in general, there's standards in Guilty Gear, like a, a, a level three in terms of heaviness attack will have X frames and level four will have X plus four or whatever, right? 5K is actually special because it's less hit stop than most other attacks. Um, so, oops, stop it. There we go, Slayer, behave. Um, so what we're doing is uh, we're gonna get used to using this 5K, not just as a tick throw tool like what we've been doing, but also as a combo starter, okay? Um, and so, just as a very basic combo, this is this is actually one of the combos that I started getting Irene on. We're just gonna do 5K, close S, 2H, 2D, and then you're gonna cancel 2D into uh, 2, 2S to get your Gekidin charge. All right, it's gonna look like this. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, just like that. There are all kinds of strings that you could be doing with Jam. I like this one. It gives you a lot of time to confirm. So we'll get on that next. But for now, you just wanna get get the hang of this, really, right? Just like the chip BNB we used to be doing. And after the knockdown, go ahead and run up, try and get a meaty 5K. I think I think you can meaty it. We'll set, we'll check real quick. Let's set Slayer to jump. Or I can check. You don't have to do it. You can keep doing it. Yeah, so you can set the dummy to, to jump just to make sure that you're getting the 5k meaty. Oop. Just take him back and forth. Oh, a little bit too far away. The 2h is nice because it pulls them in close. So the ender after the sweep charges up her, uh, her kick specials. Jacob asks, wouldn't 5P, 5K, 5H, 2H, 2D charge be better? Uh, not necessarily. 5P whiffs on crouchers, and you usually want to start a, 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 with a low if you can, because it's a little bit harder to block. Also, in this game, you don't always want more attacks in a combo, because the longer your combo goes on, oops, the longer your combo goes on, uh, the less damage each hit does. It's a system called damage scaling. So if you have a 5P and a 5K in a combo, your, your combo might do less damage 
uh, than it would, oh, for getting the charge, uh, if you didn't have the 5P. Yeah, you're not going to use Jam's 5P that often. Oh, a little late. So once you're done charging up 22S, you can you can go ahead and charge up uh, 22H or 22K. Yeah, 5K is real good. You just want you don't want too many lights in the combo if you can help it. Ooh. Yeah, Labrys, you can absolutely do that. Jam Jam's Gatlings are great. Just get the hang of doing the string. It's nice. You get a knockdown. You still get to run up for another meaty 5k. And you get a card charged up. You get a little bit of everything. It's beautiful. All right. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do uh, that same string. But instead of ending in down, down, uh, slash for the charge, we can, we can make Slayer stop jumping. Uh, we can, instead of ending in down, down, uh, and a button, 2-2 two, two and a button to, to get a charge, we're going to cancel the 2-D into 4-6 and then punch, punch. That, that part alone is just going to look like this. See, you just, you just knock that vampire clear across the screen, right? So it looks like this. I kind of mash the end. <laughs> now, this combo is nice for different reasons, right? I can do this. And then I can still charge safely because he's real far away. And look, because it blasts him across the screen, if, I, if I'm if i already carded up, I just get to chase him into the corner. That's great. But if I do it in the corner, well, this fucking sucks because uh, the recovery from the punch is so long that I actually don't get enough time to like charge and do other stuff, right? See, uh, I tried to mash kick after that. So if I try to be greedy, I try to get everything. If I want to charge and then a button, it'll be too late. I'm gonna say you can get a safe jump time. That's handy. We'll keep that in mind when we need it. But for now, I tend to think of this as uh, off that 2D, you can have a couple different things, right? So if you wanna keep up up close pressure, you want the Oki and you wanna charge, then you get the you get, you get the card, you can, you can do a dive kick. Oop. You can do run up uh, 5K and do it all over again. But if you wanna blow them away, if you, want, if you want to get them far away, then you go for this one instead. This does more damage and has more corner carry, uh, but it, it gives you a little bit less to work with in terms of resources and follow-ups. It does some good damage, though. Look at that. So, yeah, just, just try these out. Get used to both. <sighs> I know this motion can feel a little bit weird, canceling from 2D into 4-6-PP, because no one else really does this, right? There aren't many other characters that have to go from 2D into back forward like that. So if you're having a little trouble with it, it's perfectly understandable. The thing you want to remember, and most people, I think, when they're trying this, if they're having trouble, the, the big thing that they're dealing with uh, is they might be holding 2D and then rolling back and then forward. What you want to do is tap the 2 for 2D and then let go and go 4 6 like that. That's right, use gates or parry. Wow. Everyone but Sweet Jam mashes the, the 4 6 <laughs> uh, P. That's really funny. Yeah. I figured it's because I was a scrub. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do one more loop with the four six P. Because because uh, this corner carry is so far, we're just the, the laps are real short. All right. Oh yeah, Grimmin, that should be easy on a hitbox. Yeah, you can just go pop, pop, pop. You can use each finger, it's easy. All right. So one more thing, and then we'll move on to our, our net play lobbies. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set block to random. Okay, so we have a random block, 
block switching enabled, we'll keep them on normal for now, right? And what we're gonna do is, <sighs> oh. what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do those strings that we've been doing. Well, <laughs> actually first, before before we do that, I need to let these cards rock because the, the fire icon is just driving me crazy right here. Oh, look at that full, that full region, the max region. Oh, and the max Geki, so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of water real quick. So what we're gonna do is, we got the dummy set to random block, right? And what we wanna do is, on hit, we wanna get a combo, and on block, we wanna get a tick throw, right? And if we can't get the tick throw, that's okay. But if we can't get the tick throw, let's, let's bail safely. We don't wanna be negative next to Slayer. That's a real bad time. Do the cards make the attacks plus? No. In some cases, they might make them less minus. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, to give us a little bit more time to try and hit confirm, hey, Cheeto Paths, thank, thank you so much for the 18 months, homie. Um, Exacool, the big, the big thing that you get from the cards is you get damage, you get hard knockdowns, uh, you, the attacks are often faster, um, and they'll often have other properties. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. So, uh, when we go for this combo, because we want a little more time to confirm it, what we're gonna do is we'll try 5K, 2K, close S, 2H, 2D, right? So if, if, if they're not blocking real quick, it's gonna look like this, right? Oops, too much. <laughs> Just like that. We're adding an extra button. Cool. Just like that, okay? But we're gonna set it to block and we're gonna see, it's okay if we mess this up, but we're gonna see if we can, by the time the 2K hits, decide, oh, it's time to throw if they blocked and in, in, it's time to go for the combo if they didn't. Oh, bro, yeah. One bin, you're thinking about 6H. <laughs> oh. Did I set it to random block? No. I said to block everything. I'm an idiot. Don't mind. <laughs> Oops. Dang it. This is good practice. I know, because I'm messing it up. <laughs> Oops. A little bit too long for a tick throw, but whatever. We'll take it. So if if you get deep into the combo string, and uh, you don't, and they blocked it all, but you weren't able to set up a throw, then what you want to do instead is you want to go into 2D and just IED backwards, just like that. All right, let's do it. Oh. <laughs> oh, so it might be easier to just stick with 2S here instead of five, instead of close S. That'll make it easier to avoid getting accidental charges. Let's do that instead. Oh. Oh, interesting. So the, the 2H doesn't hit with both hits at max range. Oops. That's right. So on block, you go for the throw. And on hit, you go for the combo. That's it. Just basic strike throw pattern. You can throw in a region over there every now and then. Yeah. See, it's starting to work out a little better now. 
At first, we weren't getting it. Now we're getting it. Practice. It's magical. Mix that up. You don't want to do that in the corner, but it's okay. We're just having some fun. Check them out of the corner. Oh, a little late on the throw. That's all right. Oh, don't, don't want that. Oh. But yeah, just getting used to our throw combos, getting used to our B&Bs. Jam's got a lot of fun stuff that she can do. But a lot of that stuff gets a, a lot of the fun stuff is unlocked once you've got a credible strike throw mix up. And the neat thing is about this stuff in particular is that this is relevant for pretty much everybody, right? Chip can do some stuff like this too. Katemkin can't really do it because he can't run. But you know what? Nope. He has Hammerfall. But you know what? Fuck Potemkin. That's right. Fuck that big ass motherfucker. Fuck that guy. We're not playing Potem. We're playing a better grappler. We're playing Jam. <laughs> it's true, Ama. Yeah. Learning learning when jam combos aren't going to work is a pretty big deal. Oop. There we go. We're just going to do this a couple more times. Oh, one thing that might help when you're when you're hit confirming, right? When you're when you're looking to see if something is hit or blocked specifically, the thing that will give you the quickest uh, uh, cue to react to is the color of the hit sparks. So if you're if you're there, there are many different things in fighting games that you can learn to react to, right? And you can you can react to like uh, the silhouette, right? Like is someone uh, it, when you look at this, when you look at Ryujin, for example, the big thing that you're going to react to is the silhouette of Jam, her outline, as well as the movement, right? And if you're going to react to an attack like 5D, some of what you're going to react to is the silhouette, but the silhouette's actually kind of hard to read. It's the, the orange effect, right? That big circle, that's going to be your, your best cue. And Knifey is saying he looks to the health bar, and the problem with looking at the health bar is that that means your eyes have to be looking up where the health bar is, right? If you want to get something a little bit quicker, color is something that's pretty quick for you to be for you to react to, right? Specifically, the difference between orange and blue, which is basically the hit sparks you're going to be looking at, um, it's going to be easier to react to that than it is to react to the health, right? Um, and because the hit sparks happen the moment the attack connects, you don't have to worry about uh, about the thing you're reacting to be, you know, being a little delayed, right? So I like to react to the colors of the hit sparks. Oops. I remember Bonchan. Uh, oops. I remember Bonchan talking about how uh, when he reacts to like hit confirming crouch medium kick, um, the thing that he looks at is the stun gauge in Street Fighter V, because that's the easiest thing to read. But the problem is that that takes his eyes away from the screen, and so he's left open to other things. And he said, the thing, I guess the, the thing that makes Punk special that other Karen players uh, can't do, oops, is that, uh, he doesn't have to look at the at the the stun gauge. He can just look at the characters or something. Ooh. 
I mean, it depends on what you're trying to hit confirm, right? In this case, we're looking we're looking to hit confirm so we can do the difference between a strike or a throw. And Azami or Hammerfall won't necessarily give you that. And anyway, with both those situations, I usually just try and pick a move that beats them straight up instead of having to, to, to risk it, right? Like, I'll just mash punch or... Chip has a, a J2K, which beats Azami. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more last set. Ooh, yeah, we got our throws. Got the combos, oh, oh baby, that was perfect. Good stuff, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. We've done another, I'd say that's about, I, I don't time these very strictly, but I'd say that's about 30 minutes of just working on some basic jam stuff. And on Monday, we'll keep on working on some basic jam stuff. Thanks again for joining me. You can go ahead and just stretch out your real body. We, we got your jam warmed up, but now we gotta get our bodies warmed up, right? Go ahead and shake it off. Move those wrists. Hi, Kinako. Pet your dogs. <laughs> yeah, she's whining. I don't know what she wants. Yeah, alright. 